Good morning, Warriors. Back with another episode of Vigor Warriors 2 and the 1% Club, September 27, 2022. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are on your purpose. And we are back, Vigor Warriors 2, back with another one. Uh, I actually did get a chance yesterday, and I actually went through a lot of the stuff that that we have to go back and look at, and uh, I, I finally wrote down all a lot of the comments and shout outs, so sometimes I forget, so I apologize. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the stuff that you guys have been doing. We're up to 600 at least uh, subscriptions, which is wonderful. We have 600 in our 1% club, and that's good. We'll continue working towards as many as we can get to move our number in this world to 2%, 3%, and eventually 50% and 70%. And we get a lot of people to actually go ahead and uh, kind of use semen retention as a way of life and uh, realize what God's purpose really is for us. Uh, you know, that's uh, something that, uh, you know, we need to kind of look at. So good, 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 good. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. Got my son in my uh, eyes for a second there. So I did write down some things here. Uh, I'm going to do one on uh, how to eliminate lust. Somebody, uh, the person's name is somebody, uh, actually um, sent one. So thank you for that, somebody. And then one on asked me about DMX. Uh, doing that on a person. I haven't done one of those for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then Mark had one on addictions, supplements, and things like that, so we're going to go ahead and talk about that one. And then uh, I'm going to do one on Oscar today and Junior. He's got a couple good quotes, so shout out to you guys. But let me finish my little part of my list here. Um, I think we're going to talk, the real legend had a nice comment about imperfect diet and things like that, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about that at some point. Uh, Wads Click. Uh, did one on one percent. I liked his comment. Thank you, uh, Willem. Thank you so much for your comments. I appreciate you a great deal. He also talked about Fountain of Youth, so we're going to focus on that one a little bit too. We'll do another one on that one. Um, yes, thank you, Spiritual Wisdom, for your comments. Uh, Aaron Zywicki and Willem again. Thank you for another comment. Spiritual Wisdom I also did a nice one as well. Green Matrix Orb. Thank you, Tori. Uh, there's one on practicing monk mode. We'll do that one. And Steph, uh, or Steph, thank you. Uh, congratulations on day four. Keep going, my friend. Day four is uh, is a start. It is always hard that when you start, my friends, and my friend, my warriors here. If it's always it's always harder to start the process. Once you get into day by day, you kind of build a habit. I go back to uh, even comment that uh, somebody was um, you know t talking about here. One of the ways to eliminate the lust, and we'll talk about this more in detail, but one of the ways to do it is to form habits that get you away from this type of thinking. This is why I went to monk mode, and monk mode is that completely eliminating any kind of thought that way. Now, you may think, well, that's really not right. That's not the way we should be. Just realize that you have your human basic nature. You know, you're attracted to a woman. You will react to a woman. No doubt about it. It's really the lust of it that is killing us. You know, if it's time to procreate with somebody, you're going to do that. But the lust part means you desire the person, you're thirsty for the person so much that you lose control of your energy and all kinds of stuff you're doing. And this is the kind of stuff you want to stay away from. Uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit in the comments that both Junior and Oscar had. So I'm going to combine, combine both of those together. But guys, lust is really uh, you know against everything in the Bible. Lust is against anything you're doing because it's destructive within. And this is a this is an idea where you can't you have to have that woman, you have to have that person, and that's no there's no other, there's no other solution. And that is just something that's going to destroy you. You've seen that happen to millions and millions of men over the years, and it's just a matter of that they can't control themselves. And women, they eventually don't want somebody that can't control themselves. In fact, we'll talk about that in a second. It's very interesting. So anyway, so anyway, somebody, I'm going to go ahead and talk more about that, but it's a forming a habit. They say it's about 21 days to form a habit. And so, you know, if you could start working on this day four stuff and keep working on this, you'll find that the habits you're doing will lead you closer and closer. Now, you're going to have some temptation. You're going to fall back. You know, in the 47 years that I had problems with this, um, I went back many, many times. It was hard to break it. But keep on that purpose, keep on that battle, and it is a battle. It really is a battle. It's a spiritual battle more than anything else, but it's a physical battle as well, obviously, because it turns into physical. And that's something you have to be very careful of. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about a couple of nice comments that I saw here. Uh, one, one comment was from Oscar, who talked about people staring at him as being annoying. And that is Oscar. You're right about that. Uh, shout out to you, my friend, on that one. I'm going to combine that a little bit with the comment that um, Junior had. Junior made the comment saying that women will not like it when you use semen retention. So these two actually, I'm going to combine, may not sound totally like they should be combined, but there's, an, there's a reason what's going on here. So let's talk about this. So Oscar's talking about people staring, and Junior's talking about people who, um, you know, just, they're just not annoying type of thing, but they don't like it when you're using some retention. So here is the crux of this. And I, maybe I'll call this one, well, women, women are all around you. What will you do? And semen retention. Now, here's the here's the thing, and this is something that it took me a long, long time. And so, my part, my uh, knowledge, we want to call it to you guys about this. It is really kind of a crazy, um, ironic type of twist of fate here, of these things that happen. So, when you're we're twenty, obviously we're thinking about, you know women and procreating, all kinds of stuff, and you know, children, perhaps, things like that. And so when we're younger, all those, that that drive we have is very, very strong. And the thing is, is that we're not really thinking too much about relationships and all that kind of stuff, even though that may happen. Uh, women and girls think about this a lot earlier than we do, because they're, that's their nature. The nature is to, you know, nurture and have families and raise their children in a way where they have protection, almost like any kind of species, if you look at this. I mean, the species, the birds, everything, and the cats, they all do the same type of thing. So it's no different in our species. In fact, there's a lot more similarities than people think there is. I think that when you look at the males and the females in any kind of species, you'll see a lot of similarities between what we do in the human species compared to a lot of the other ones. Now, we talk about this fact, and the idea is that most women... And most men are used to the system that we've had for thousands of years. And the system is, is that basically you're going to go around and procreate and, and look for women. And then mate. Women will look for men to mate with. And this is what happens. And so this is what happens all the time. And so society is perpetuated through all these years because you've had children and keep moving along and things like that. Well, all of a sudden now... It's always been, especially over the last, you know, maybe 100 years or 200 years, I'm not sure what it is. But the idea was is that the men are supposed to be chasing the women. Even though it is probably a common fact, though this is not something people want to talk about, is the fact that women are really the ones choosing. Women are the ones really choosing the men. I mean, they choose the men. I mean, I remember an old saying that my dad said to me one time. He says the the uh, men will chase the women until they catch him and basically that's kind of what the philosophy is women are the attractive ones at physically looking a lot of men in your 20s your potential is what gets you it now as men get older they become a lot more attractive but when they're younger you know a lot of them are still you know looking for ways getting goals attention you know trying to achieve things we don't focus on any kind of physical type of thing for the most part now, there's obviously there exceptions with that and most of us are trying to accomplish things and do things. And so we're kind of in that stage where we're potential. So a lot of um, women look at potential of the men that they look at. And so, but men, they're looking at the physical qualities, obviously. That's the number one thing we tend to look at. And that's been shown in research for years that the physical quality is what, you know, males, males look at. So we look at that. And so the natural then progression for women, especially in their 20s and 30s, feels like that, well, they're going to be chasing, being chased by the men. And of course, you know, there is a lot of men that do that. And women tend to be, you know, uh, very, uh, they have a kind of a domination of the, the market in the 20s because they get to kind of choose. Now, if they don't do that and they kind of, you know, fool around and have fun and everything, they may find themselves, I know a lot of women find themselves in their 30s and 40s, they can't find a relationship anymore and they're kind of stuck being by themselves. And that's kind of a sad situation, but that happens a lot of times because they don't recognize how much they need men in their 20s and they feel like, well, they don't need men and so, you know, uh, just going to fool around and do things. And somehow this society, again, has, has gotten things all backwards and so... 
part of it is that, that kind of situation. Now, so what happens then is that women are expecting men to do that. And so when men hold on to their, uh, their, their seed, they hold on to their retention, they hold on to their um, energy, what happens then is women, first of all, it is such a shock because it's only, it, we're talking about 1%, it's probably less than 1% of men really doing this on a constant basis. And so what ends up happening then is the women, they're amazed, they don't know what the heck, and they're sitting there and they're staring. And they can't, they can't, they can't stop themselves from staring. Because here's a man who they know is using semen retention. They just know it. They, they feel it. They feel the energy pulsating. Now, you and I may not see it. Now, I, I don't really see it. I mean, I feel 100% better. But it's just, I still, it's still amazing to me, and I, I think we've had people ask me about this. I mean, still after 60-some years, you know, of living, which is, I, we should have been doing this back when I was in the 20s. And the idea that all these women are noticing something about you. They treat you differently. And it may be just an, a smile. It may be something where they're saying, be nice to you in a different way. But you could tell a huge difference. Even I can at my age. And being on this, you know, it just gets, it gets better and better and better. Now, along with that, however, you're going to get people who the women also know what is happening. They may not say anything. And it's more of a subconscious biological thing they sense. And if you tell them, they'll probably be really upset about it. But basically what you're doing is you're basically controlling yourself. And when you're controlling yourself, as uh, I think it was Junior said this, you're basically getting women to change what they've been doing and what they expect for a long period of time. And as a result of that, they're not happy. Now remember, a lot of this is, is ingrained in us over the years. The men are chasing the women. The men give women attention. If the women likes the men, even though they really wanted to, they 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 like the man to begin with. Basically, then women will say, "Okay, you know, we'll uh, get together." But the thing is, is that if you flip the flip the script, and basically now you're the one who is doesn't really care. This is what they call the bad boys, right? This is why women get attracted to a lot of that because they're they really like attention. And if you're sitting there not giving attention, all of a sudden you don't care, it's not like you're chasing them anymore, well then they have to they have to do something to change the scenario. And so what they're doing then is that they flock around you. And this is why you see some, some men behaving differently than others because they've got to understand this rule. And when you use some retention, you're at the utmost highest level of that because you're not basically kind of doing anything that's going to chase after women or chase because you got too much going on. You got your goals, you got your plans. You're not you're not wasting time with this kind of stuff and wasting your energy. So there's a two-edged type of thing here. You're going to get women who are going to surround you in a sense and always be around you. And they're going to go ahead and feel that energy. They're going to stare at you as uh, Oscar's talking about. And it's, it, it's, it's time is going to get annoying because your attitude now is different. In the past, when I did back in the 20s, when I was 20s, when I was 20 years old, it, you know, it was like, I, I mean, I loved the tension, but see, I was in a different state and mentality because you wanted to have intercourse and, and be with women all the time back when I was that age. But that was a mistake in, 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 as I reflect back on it because I think that that was something subconsciously women knew and so they played you know they didn't they didn't act that way but now all of a sudden even though the women are around and they're uh, you know it, it's staring and they're an annoying with the staring basically you're basically saying no no nah, I don't want any part of this and so basically now they're going to try harder and so now it's really kind of like I said it's that client that that ironic type of twist because when you wanted that stuff before in the 20s, and a lot of young, young guys are in that state, you know, it, it, it wasn't the same because you looked desperate. And I look desperate. Now you guys look desperate. I look desperate, right? 
And so when that changed, all of a sudden, now the flip, the script was flipped, and now the women are the ones who are noticing this, and they're highly attracted to you. On the other hand, even though they're highly attracted to you, what their goal is, even though it's a subconscious thing, I don't think it's done on purpose. I mean, I remember seeing a couple of movies called 40 Weeks or something. I know it was 40 Weeks, but something like this, where a guy was, uh, it, was a, it was kind of a half spoof on retention, but the women were chasing him, trying to make him release. I don't think it was actually mentioned, but that was kind of what they were doing. And so they all kind of get together and gather, and they were trying to do the best they could to do that. And they're trying to spoof it, but like any kind of movie, there's a sense of reality in all of that. And reality is very true. Women sense it. They know the power you have. And this is the unknown truth that we've been trying to change in our society where I believe that because of products, because of you know people want to make money, all these kind of things, they've actually had people who are de, uh, you know, kind of lowering the power of males through all this stuff. And so you don't want to release. I don't care what the doctors are saying. You don't want to release. I've had this for two years now, two, what, 280, I don't know what it is, 86 days now, something like that. Monk mode's over 85 now or 85. And so again, you know, after almost two years of this, and when you talk, look at uh, you know, autobiographies of Malcolm X and Tyson, these guys did for five years, they didn't release. Malcolm X did for 12 years. So when you see that, you realize the truth has been really elusive. This society is, is almost the opposite. And we should probably do one on this too a little bit. That what you're seeing here is an illusion. What And I believe it's the, the evil one, the Satan. And, and see this thing, part of it too, it's almost like the old thing about Dracula. That the power, Van Helsing used to say, comes from the fact that people don't believe in it. If you don't believe there's a spiritual nature, especially with Satan, then you're going to fall for this because you're going to try to explain it through the physical. And a lot of this is not physical. A lot of this is spiritual. And there are spiritual beings that make, make you up, make other people up. And those spiritual beings can take you over at any point if you don't have a basic foundation and strength within the things that you're doing. And this is why we talk about the fact that you have to be strong in the Lord. You have to believe in your God. You have to, you have, to have a strong belief that you are going to make it through and be saved. And you're gonna to have to go ahead and kind of realize that some of these behaviors that I've been doing are wrong. And this is one of them. But the idea then is really that women are gonna not make it easy for you because they want the attention. They want your energy, physically, mentally. I mean, this is what they strive for, the attention. I mean, if you don't believe that, just look sometime at all the things that women do to try to get attention. I mean, they will, put so much makeup on, they look like a whole different person. If you ever, if you doubt that, just look at some YouTube videos and you'll see that without makeup, they're a totally different person. Why do they do that? It really is an illusion to draw you in and also compete with other women. But besides that, look at the clothing industry. How much money people spend on the clothing industry for women to be able to you know, be strong in what they look like and who they are. And all these type of things go back down to images because this is what they want to have you believe they're highly attractive and desirable. I don't care what the world says about careers and this stuff. You, know, you still see women on you know, TV and all this kind of stuff. And they're still wearing seductive outfits. I don't care what kind of business they're in. And if they're not, then they're, they're looking more like men, which is not the opposite they want either. So when you look at this whole thing, this society we have is really messed up because they're teaching all the wrong types of things to change men and women. But don't fall for that kind of stuff. You're a masculine male, and no matter what they say about toxic mas masculinity and all this other kind of nonsense, it becomes an idea that they don't want you to be on this retention. They don't want you to be on semen retention. They don't want you doing that because you're strong and you've got your nutrients and you're not weak anymore. And this is where the power comes from that you have. So I just wanted to kind of mention this. So once again, a shout out because I think Oscar and Junior 
hitting two good points that are important. And the idea is that it is going to be annoying. Women are going to be surrounding you. Women will be looking at you in a strange way, different ways, and you have to kind of get used to it. And if you're married like I am, it's a, it's tricky because, you know, you know, you get, you know, women doing certain, looking at you, doing certain things that it creates more conflicts that you need at home. And you got to be careful of that kind of stuff. That's kind of why I take a look at this and just say, well, it's a nice compliment, but it's time to move on. Because really, you don't need those type of things in your life. This is, in my opinion now, and those type of things. Now, if you're 20 years old or you're looking for a partner, that's a whole different deal. Then you can be a lot more choosy, and maybe I'll do one on that one. It's a lot more choosy, and now you just have to kind of pick the right kind of person. Once again, having multiple partners never is something that I ever agreed with or I liked at all because I just think it wastes a lot of your energy. And you want to kind of focus on someone that's going to help you achieve your goals and things that you want to achieve. Not, not someone that's going to drain you. And once again, remember, women like attention. Women like to have people who are giving them attention. And whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whatever it might be, it's something that they're striving for. So you can do that. And you can have a win-win situation, but remember at what cost. Is this something that's going to benefit you in the long run? Or is this something that's going to kind of hurt you? And are you giving more than receiving back? And that's the key. It's almost like a cost-reward type of thing. Are your rewards bigger than your cost? Well, that's good. That's the way it should be. But it should be for both people. And so this is why you have to have a fine balance. And you have to be careful of the people that you really kind of spend time with and focus on because those are the types of people that are going to help you or hold you back. And as I always said, you want to get rid of the clutter in your life. And so warriors, you don't need a lot of clutter in your life. All right. So again, let me uh, shout out to uh, Oscar and to um, Junior. Thank you guys for your comments. Uh, like I said, I try to combine both together. I think certainly you're going to get a lot of women attention. I still do after 870 days. Actually, it's it's more pronounced than it was at the beginning. And so as you do it more, you're going to see it more because you become more powerful. And of course, women are going to notice that, right? They're going to see that. And then you're going to have also then uh, people, women who will not like it. Because if you're not releasing energy to them and you're holding that back, they're going to be upset, especially if you've done that before and all of a sudden you stop. But expect that because that's something that's going to happen. And it's something that you have to kind of continue to be strong. And this is why this is a battle because they're going to want your energy. I call them energy suckers, vampire suckers, zombies. But they're going to want your energy. But you need to keep your energy because the only way you, become, the only way you stay a warrior is to do that. Look at what happened with Samson Delia. Eventually she wore him down. Don't get worn down. All right, guys, have a great day. God bless you guys, and battle on, my friends. Battle on!